excuse me. <laughs> good morning and good afternoon. I am Jada McKenna, the CEO of Mercy Corps. And on behalf of the World Economic Forum, I welcome you to this session on data, digital and innovation levers taking place during the Sustainable Development Impact Summit. Together with the World Economic Forum, Mercy Corps has co-chaired the Lever for Change on Innovation for the UN Food Systems Summit. And we are so pleased to host this discussion ahead of the UN Food Systems Summit kicking off later this morning. This session is live streamed with people tuning in from around the world. Simultaneous interpretation is available in English, French, Spanish, Chinese, Arabic, and Russian. Welcome to our panelists and participants. The world has an opportunity to dramatically advance the fight against food insecurity and hunger. Today's UN Food Systems Summit will bring together governments, donors, businesses, and members of civil society from around the world in an effort to transform the way the world produces, consumes, and thinks about food. It is critical that we work together with a sense of urgency to find solutions. 2020 marked the sixth year in a row where global hunger and undernutrition were on the rise. My organization, Mercy Corps, works in some of the world's most fragile places and our global teams witness daily how the converging crises of conflict, climate and COVID-19 are fueling hunger and food insecurity. But at Mercy Corps, we also witness a world of possibility, seeing how innovation can transform food systems that build food security, resilience, and inclusive development. We know that innovation has the potential to create more productive, efficient, and climate smart markets for healthy and nutritious food, to make systems more inclusive, and to help conflict and climate affected communities weather risk and participate in the food system. We've worked in partnership with the World Economic Forum to lead the innovation lever of change designed to make innovation a significant enabling factor for food systems transformation. The innovation lever identified four main innovation areas and convened experts and organizations in four working groups, which included data and digital, knowledge and technological, society and institutional, and national and regional. With the joint effort of these four groups, the innovation lever has identified an action agenda to guide member states and communities to fast track food system transformation by fostering innovation. Today, we have gathered a distinguished panel representing a diverse community of public, private, and social sector innovation partners to share the role that innovation can play in transforming food systems through country-led action. Our speakers will share their insights on how we can collaborate among stakeholders and use knowledge and technology to build strong food systems that deliver healthy food for everyone, including those who live in the most fragile places. So turning to our panelists, I'd like to welcome Mr. Christian Frutiger, Assistant Director General, Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, Switzerland. His Excellency Effa Muleta Boru, the Advisory State Minister of Agriculture of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia. Her Excellency Maryam Mohamed Saeed Al Mahari, Minister of State for Food Security, the Office of the Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates. Mr. Sven Tore Holseter, President and Chief Executive Officer of Yara International based in Norway. Um, and last but certainly not least, Sean DeClain, the head of the Food Systems Initiative and a member of the Executive Committee of the World Economic Forum in Switzerland. So um, what I'd like, I'd like to kick off the panel um, asking each speaker in the order that I um, introduced you uh, to, to give really brief remarks on, on two questions. Which innovation pathways offer the greatest potential to unlock and support country-led food systems transformation? And what new types of multi-stakeholder partnerships and social innovations can help realize that potential? Ambassador Frutiger, perhaps I'll start there. 
Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Jada, and uh, hello to everybody. I'll sort of start with a with a more uh, general, uh, with a few more general points, and then uh, maybe uh, we have in the second round uh, a bit of time to go into uh, some more uh, in-depth uh, examples, or at least give some examples to uh, bring this down uh, a little bit to the concrete actions that are that are possible. So. Yes, we for the first time uh, we will hear uh, in uh, today at the at the food systems summit uh, countries calling for a systems approach to food to address hunger, health, climate, uh, biodiversity, and livelihood, and so, so many other interconnected uh, aspects that encompass food systems. So each country will express different needs and challenges to improve their food systems, and uh, they will. And this is really a uh, novel offer a united message that we must break silos, engage more communities and address these challenges with people, especially the most vulnerable and marginalized as we co-design co the action going forward. So these country food systems pathways have been built on an inclusive national, on inclusive national food systems dialogues that have made it possible. And this is really maybe for the first time to share, listen and understand to plan uh, together to unleash the power of food to deliver progress on all 17 SDGs. And this, in our view, is the first big innovation and the first big achievement of this process in the run-up to the Food Systems Summit. 147 countries engaged in these national food systems dialogues. Over 800 such dialogues took place all over the world, engaging more than 50,000 people altogether. So that's an overwhelming result in view of the transformation of food systems, not the transition, the transformation towards uh, sustainable uh, food systems. Uh, this gives us a strong basic social fabric and a fabric and the opportunity to understand uh, each other better among the different stakeholders and to build trust. So these multi-stakeholder uh, engagements also mean that we are now accountable to the thousands of people who participated in these dialogues. And uh, we are accountable uh, to their ideas, aspirations, and expectations. It mean, this means that governments and businesses must now take bold steps to change these structural imbalances of power that uh, have distorted and posed problem uh, to, to food systems um, over the decades. So the four innovation levers, uh, which uh, Jada mentioned in their introduction, give uh, a good, uh, give a good, uh, you know, a series of good uh, pathways uh, forward, and uh, how these bold steps could be uh, could be addressed, could be taken, and how some of these big imbalances could be addressed. I will stop here um, in the interest of time, and would then maybe like to come back with a few concrete examples on each of, of in each of these levers later. Thank you. Back to you, Jada. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Her Excellency um, Al Mahiri, would you like to go next? Thank you so much, Jada. Thank you so much to everyone being here at this important event. And it's really exciting to know that in a few hours, our food system summit is here and there to sort of pave the way um, for, for our future. And yes, we all have a role to play and the UAE also uh, takes this responsibility very seriously in transforming its food systems. Uh, I want to share with the audience as well what the UAE is doing on a national level and also on, on, a, on a global level as well. So uh, since we're discussing um, what are the innovations, innovation pathways, I wanna share with everybody what I feel and transforming the systems here in the UAE have been really critical or see that they are really good levers to, to accelerate our efforts. Number one, it's harnessing the private sector and empowering them. It's really been, um, in, in a way, the private sector are our soldiers on, on the ground. Um, we need to understand their needs. We need to see what barriers are they facing? How can they develop more? How can we ensure that uh, they take sustainable pathways as well. So we did a lot of things like ex accelerators, accelerators, but for the ag tech sector, uh, we did think tanks. We also just recently launched the Food Tech Valley. These are all initiatives that we've done in the country to empower 
the the private sector to grow um, and and develop. Um, as you all know, the UAE is a country that has very harsh climate, so we cannot do the traditional open field open field agriculture, but we can harness technology and innovation and be able to sort of grow an ag tech sector. And this is something that excites the youth. Um, women are really interested in the sector too. So we really wanna grow this sector. So understanding the needs of the private sector is for us, number one. Number two is creating strong links between government, uh, academia and the private sector. Again, this is ensuring we're communicating, we're understanding needs. Um, we just hosted uh, last week um, a, a workshop between all these parties looking at how treated wastewater could be used as a sustainable water resource for controlled environment agriculture. We know in our climates, we need a lot of water for cooling needs, but why should we use desalinated water? Why not look at treated wastewater as well? So looking at um, how treated wastewater could, could be used. And then third, it's um, empowering uh, a very exciting new sector, which is alternative foods, and in particular, in particular, the alternative proteins. Um, we really feel knowing that um, moving forward, hoping to have enough food for the 9 billion people in future, we really need to look at more sustainable ways of how we can grow and produce our, our proteins. Um, therefore, we, we really feel this whole sector of plant-based alternatives, uh, cultured meat, uh, fermentation um, is, uh, is an industry that really needs to be looked at and empowered as well. And the UAE is taking steps in this. The Food Tech Valley will also be really looking into empowering this sector. So these are the three pathways that I'd like to share with everyone that I feel are important to accelerate uh, in the decade of action that we're that's wonderful and, and very action packed. Um, His Excellency Boru. Thank you, Her Excellency, and the dear all uh, participants. Uh, first, uh, I'm very honored to participate in such a very impressive uh, panel, which will be dealt on the data and the innovation level. So currently, our government, through the Ministry of Agriculture, and also uh, ATA, Agricultural Transformation Agency, collaborated to work of food systems, summit innovation level, change to help defining shared innovation principles, supporting the collaboration of actors across the sectors, uh, meaning that from it is all the agricultural value chains in which we have just currently prepared the food and uh, nutrition strategy so that uh, this innovation policy brief which is prepared by uh, this panel under the convener of World economic forum will help us just in the future to uh, transform our uh, food system here in ethiopia uh, to it is highest cliff we saw through this uh, framework we have just stated the game-changing solutions in which the innovation and technology of this data and the innovation uh, will help us. The other point here uh, I want to just uh, put here is regarding the data and the digital coalition, uh, including our ministry uh, and also ATA, Ethiopian uh, Agriculture and Transformation Agency, the Mercy Corpus, Consumers International, and also World Economic Forum also produced the future marketplace playbook, exploring transparent and exclusive sustainable scale models that enable all actors, meaning that along it is this uh, value chains to from the our small farmers to the producers as uh, to the consumers, so that in order to just uh, access and easily transform this all uh, through this process. So that this playbook uh, features the work for our ministry and the doing all ATA and the data hub and also transformative leverage point to drive forward the broader strategy, meaning that with that we have put in the food and the nutrition strategy. So that with this, uh, as a government and also as our ministry and also respected sectors, we are very uh, welcomed this all technologies 
which will be just uh, enabling us or leveraging us uh, to just uh, transform our food uh, along its uh, value chains. So that uh, in future with this coalition, we are very uh, honored and welcome all uh, stakeholders or uh, both of the government or non government uh, participants to do participate on this all in order to realize our this strategy, which I have been just uh, stated uh, before. So that, thank you very much. This all our pointers and also uh, back to you. Yeah, th thank you, Minister Boru. Ethiopia has been on the path towards transformation for a while, so it's always great to hear about your latest efforts. Um, and Mr. Sven Holstetter, please. Thank you, Teda, and uh, dear fellow panelists. Um, Yarent National is, is a global crop nutrition company. And uh, as a direct response to the uh, Paris Agreement, we decided to, to change our, our mission, our vision, and our strategy to embed the sustainable development goals. So our mission is to responsibly feed the world and protect the planet. And in that is a is a promise both to help to, to grow food for, uh, for a, uh, a growing population, but also to do it in a sustainable and inclusive way. And I think in, in this session, I'll focus on the um, inclusivity uh, part of it, because uh, sadly, what we've seen in the last year is that the number of people going hungry to bed has increased for the first time in a very long time. A uh, hundred million more people are going hungry to bed now than about a year ago. So. Uh, an innovation can do something about that. And it's not, to me at least, uh, only about technology. It's about the distribution of knowledge. And when we make knowledge available uh, to everyone, uh, we, we start to close the social divide that we have uh, today. And the technologies already exist. Um, the challenge is how do we reach the millions of farmers uh, through uh, user-friendly and, and real-time uh, data so that, that, that they can use. And let me be super concrete on this. As a response to the pandemic, we launched something called Africa Connect, where we reached out to, to, to farmers uh, and retailers to, to spread agronomic competence. And in just a matter of uh, months, we were able to get um, 4,000 retailers on board. 2 million farmers in Tanzania and, and Kenya. And with this ecosystem where we bring solutions uh, together, we, we, we start to see real results already in the first uh, harvest where we see uh, uh, crop yields multiplying for, compared to where they were before. And that uh, has a, a food security impact, but also from a, a, a small business point of view, we're making the farmers more uh, profitable. And, and that game changer is through technology and where we can start to reward smallholder farmers with additional income for better practices. And we can build on that with uh, uh, something that we've launched a go to carbon lines to, to do carbon farming, to create additional income for the, for the farmers, uh, as well as we uh, both address a climate issue, but also an income issue for, for the farmers. So for me, technology is, is a, a very strong solution to this but think about it more as an enabler to spread knowledge. Today, with the help of whether it's a smartphone like this or a normal uh, cell phone, you can put in the palm of the smallholder farmer uh, knowledge and expertise that in the past would only be available to huge uh, industrial scale farmers. Uh, today, we're reaching 10 million farmers uh, digitally. By 2030, we're aiming at uh, connecting with 100 million farmers. I think I'll keep it there for now. Uh, that, that's wonderful. And those numbers are good examples of, of aiming for, as as Mr. As Ambassador Frutiker said, aiming for transformation and um, not just transition. As we know, this summit is really just the beginning um, of an action path that we all will take to move towards transformation. So with that, I just have a few follow-up questions um, to, to kind of get us all inspired about the actions that you all are taking and, and to help us think about pragmatic steps we can take ourselves. 
Um, I'd, I'd like to start with you, Her Excellency Al Mahiri. You've spoken about how the UAE is advancing innovative agricultural technology to deal with your specific climate. Um, and can you share, and while also creating a more inclusive workforce, and I think you mentioned youth specifically, can you share how you see the new ideas and practices being formed in the UAE like can help other arid countries? Sure, sure. Thanks, Jada. And yeah, I, I, I totally agree with what Sven says. It's, it's the innovation and technology, but ensuring that, so once we know and we have this technology and innovation and, and expertise, we need to share this. It's our duty to, to do so. So the UAE being a country that has very low annual rainfall, um, less than 5% arable land, um, we've, we really had to look into how we can innovate um, when looking at what we could grow in the UAE and still be sustainable. So not everything makes sense to grow here in the UAE, but because of technology advancements, there are a lot of food types that we can grow now using um, closed environment agricultural systems. And um, really for us, when, when you look now what you can find locally, um, we've got all the vegetables you can think of, leafy greens, we've got blueberries, raspberries, quinoa, uh, salmon. Um, these are all foods that just in the last two, three years, uh, you're actually seeing in the market. So um, also making sure that the, the people here are aware that this is this is made locally and this is made sustainably. So, so that people now start thinking about where food comes from because we're a country that all the last years have been very much used to importing a lot of food um, everyone was used to having food coming from abroad but now it's kind of like this mindset change we're like no actually you can find this locally and try to support your local producers as well and including also the local farmers and making sure that they also know what technologies they could use ensuring they have access to financing, access to land, access to insurance. So, so we're really going through a transformation and changing the blueprint of the country and looking at uh, what we could produce here sustainably. Uh, just to mention that the UAE has basically a plan, a national plan. Um, we have the UAE National Food Security Strategy. I think it's really important for countries to ensure that they have targets to work towards. They have they have a plan, and that all the authorities know the, the bigger umbrella uh, to to where they so so they know where they're working towards. I think this is really important, and um, we have that here in the UAE. And this plan is all about transforming our food systems and also taking that knowledge, which we will hopefully then develop or are developing, and sharing that with others who also have hot arid climates like we do. So we don't want to just become, or we are a hub of food trade, but we want to now become also a hub of knowledge, technology for hot arid climates too. Uh, so taking this, taking this up, and of course, any new technology that you're looking at, there is a, there's usually a high cost uh, coming with it. But once you start uh, fine tuning it and looking how you can down uh, or put down the costs, and really make it something that's accessible for all, for all is really important here as well. So um, yeah, so in, in a nutshell, what we wanna do is we wanna look at technology and innovation, ensure we're reaching everyone, ensure the community is also taking a part in this and is demanding the right foods and looking at foods locally as well. Um, and then of course, taking that knowledge as well to others who have the same kind of environment that, that we have. Thank you. I love that creation of a new blueprint and then spreading that and sharing. That's wonderful. Minister Burrow, you talked about the work of the Data and Digital Coalition and the market book playbook that emerged for that is, is very impressive. Um, and we are at Mercy Corps have been really proud to be part of these efforts. Can, can you talk a little bit more about your vision um, and ambitions for advancing and scaling data and digital solutions after the summit and particularly um, ensuring that these solutions enable these transformations to reach the last mile? Thank you, uh, Madam Tajida. <clears throat> uh, as you know, uh, Ethiopia is currently just expanding her uh, internet penetration to all, especially for this uh, rural areas through that, but we started before some, as I told you, ATA data hub, uh, agriculture and transformation data hub, currently just giving service for small farmers 
extension services uh, by using uh, some uh, technologies, just SMS, the short message, and also others. So for future, our ambition with this data collection, uh, after we expand all this, this uh, the internet uh, penetration to all our 80% of small farmers in the future, we are highly in need of just, also we have just uh, uh, designed the strategy, the Ethiopian uh, digital strategy uh, in that our country just uh, framed into five thematic areas in which agriculture is one of it, in which uh, we are just in the future promoting the, agri the digital agriculture uh, economy. So that in that we highly need of this data coalition, the digital data. So that for that we have just uh, expanding our infrastructures to serve this. So ATA, agriculture transformation, and other all international and also local uh, developers could help us. Uh, we believe and also want to just uh, call for them on this special panel. In the future, we have the ambition of this uh, transforming our society. So this data revolution, okay? I, I get some points, very impressive points from uh, UAE and also other my speakers from Yara and also you, and also this is very impressive uh, from the side of uh, this uh, coalition, this data coalition, so that we are very, very welcome and also have revised our new policy in which it is very, incited to work with this digital agriculture in the future. So we are very welcomed and also heartily we also presented our, this strategy in the Rome pre-summit, first pre-summit, our His Excellency Minister Umar also presented them. And also we have been much institutionalizing and forming in the issue of this uh, climate smart market for our food and nutrition. So this, to conclude, we are very welcomed and also request this. Ethiopia, as you know, have a well conducive agroecology, and also we have conducive environment, and also ample uh, large of large agricultural land use to feed ours and also the globe. Thank you very much. Back to you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bohr. Christian, I know one of the, um, you talked about food, food system innovation, and I know one of the things that um, STC has really been a pioneer in is around the food innovation hubs, um, supporting this ecosystem of food transformation at a country level. Um, what, can you talk about to us a little bit about the unique opportunities you see in those for addressing food insecurity um, and for ensuring innovations really reach those who have been historically excluded from the system? Um, absolutely. Uh, thanks a lot. It's really breaking this down uh, then to the to the local level. And so I'd like to just make four points on the four areas of the of the policy brief. Uh, you know, on knowledge and uh, technological solutions, Switzerland has uh, taken leadership in um, the Food Systems Pre Summit to launch the Coalition on Agroecology, together with nine other member states, UN organizations, and uh, farmers associations, among others. Agroecology is often uh, some often you know, believed as a bit of a, an outdated concept, but we are uh, really convinced that it's dynamic and innovative and that it can help avoid some of the clashes and dead ends in the current food systems. Particularly, it will help uh, these millions of smallholder farmers who are at the basis of the food systems, particularly in uh, the global south. And the high-level panel of experts on food security and nutrition uh, has outlined these 13 principles, which clearly uh, point into that direction. Tomorrow, um, SDC uh, will co-organize co the launch of a citizen science initiative, which reaches out uh, to farmers and food consumers around the world and of all generations um, to really look at innovative ways of uh, transiting to, uh, to uh, agroecological uh, food systems. Second, institutional innovation addressing some of the financing gaps, again, at local level. Governments uh, can give the regulatory framework and the po policy environment, uh, but we also need uh, smart ways of risk sharing with the private sector. And uh, we need to find the, the, the right mix uh, uh, you know, of blended finance instruments. Uh, here, an initiative, just as an example, uh, in, in Africa, uh, looking at the missing middle. So 
funding, financing um, uh, small and medium-sized enter enterprises uh, in agricultural uh, transformation. So they, uh, they, they connect basically smallholder farmers to local uh, markets. Huge financing gap there. Um, we're, uh, we're looking to raise uh, with uh, 50 million Swiss francs or US dollars in grant uh, funding, uh, about 700 million dollars in private funding, in, in private funding, uh, providing first loss guarantees and uh, technical assistance out of uh, these 50 million and raising the other 700 million. Thirdly, uh, more from a hub uh, perspective, uh, national, regional uh, innovation ecosystems, uh, but also looking at cities. Cities are um, food uh, systems, ecosystems in themselves. They have a powerful leverage. They're also slightly more manageable uh, than uh, national level uh, or uh, regional uh, level, level systems. And uh, we have uh, been working uh, with cities. We're also uh, supporting a uh, nutrition in city ecosystems init initiative uh, in uh, Bangladesh. Kenya and, uh, and Rwanda to really uh, push towards that. And last but not least, data and digital. I'm not going to go into details. This is a whole universe, but just a pitch in a bit more than two weeks time, the UN World Data Forum will be taking place in Switzerland. And uh, we'll so certainly uh, continue uh, the discussion on food systems and innovation hubs there. Thank you. That's wonderful. Lots of exciting stuff coming on. Sven, Yara's commitment to nature positive production and reaching farmers is and has been impressive for a long time. Um, and loved hearing about the data and digital intake that you're pushing. Can you talk about what continued support you see needed from governments um, and civil society to, to reach your goal of 100 million and to continue to spread, um, to spread these innovations? Thanks, uh, Chad, and uh, I'll, I'll be uh, super short in the interest of time here, but if I could have a wish, it would be that we could all get together and create uh, a standardized open farm and field data exchange, because if we get that in place globally, uh, we have something to build on, then, then we can get scale, we can incentivize based on that, we can measure, we can de-risk, and, uh, and through that, uh, we will uh, be able to uh, to also uh, simplify the life of uh, farmers, because imagine if everyone is trying to do this in his or her proprietary way to, to measure how are we then going to be able to, to help the everyday life of the farmers. But if we have a standard in place, we would uh, be able to get that uh, done. And uh, I'm uh, certainly committed to that uh, from from Yara, and we are working with several players in the in the food system as well to to try to create this neutral system that could be a standalone system, but that would enable the collection of data and also to create the incentives so that we could reach a hundred million farmers. This is doable, but let's try to do it as simple as possible. Thanks. Yes. Yes, yes, I, I love that. It's doable and we can do it uh, with minimal complexity. Um, this has been an illuminating discussion on how innovation can play a role in transforming food systems and particularly critical in understanding how innovation can work in practice to deliver results to help us advance the fight against food insecurity and hunger. And, and I wanna give a tremendous thank you to our panelists and I, I sincerely hope that everyone watching this has, has been inspired or thought about other ways that they can move the agenda forward. Um, I wanna thank the World Economic Forum um, and all of you for sharing your vision. I will hand it over to Sean DeClaim for closing remarks. Wonderful. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Jada, and uh, it's just lovely to to hear the, the the panel and you know the leadership that's coming through from from all of you. I think what was clear today was a real focus around people centred innovation and how innovation, <coughs> pardon me, is a key accelerator and uh, but also an enabler for food systems transformation. And we stress that word transformation, but also how it's been critical when you're looking at innovation to adopt a much wider, more holistic view of innovation that includes you know, local knowledge that brings in you know, the, very strongly the whole local agenda. It's a bottom-up agenda that, that looks at institutional and uh, institutional innovation, but also of social innovation. So I, I think what we were hearing today was particularly a focus around, we, we heard really clearly some of the wonderful leadership examples that are coming out from countries who are really looking to build those ecosystems 
at the at the country level to really focus on those whether it's food valleys or whether it's building out in in UAE or whether it's building on the the wonderful work of the agricultural transformation agency in Ethiopia and Christian talked about uh, the the role of looking at ecosystems but also not just nationally but including cities and so so how you would build out these these food innovation hubs and what what that would mean and uh, I, I think then also just the how we break the silos we heard about agroecology and regenerative uh, food and you know what what that means and you know the with the food innovation uh, with the innovation lever it's been interesting to to really focus on we, we heard the farmer's voice come through very strongly and it was talked about a lot today and the whole creation of a hundred million farmer platform promoting solutions towards net zero nature positive food system transformation uh, and then finally, yes, we did hear about digital, but what we heard was this is not the whole thing. And, uh, and some really exciting discussions there around uh, the, the, this idea of a digital data coalition that's coming out of the innovation lever, uh, and also things like the, um, the, the marketplace playbook, the digital data marketplace playbook, and just some of the, the great examples that are coming out. And, some, and, and that was really born out of a conversation between consumers and consume, led by Consumer International and farmer organizations, you know, organizations like Mercy Corps playing such a key role. And we've just seen a, a, a terrific lot of examples of where we can really start to look at inclusive use of, of data to actually improve food systems, to make sure that we're reducing waste, that we're, we're actually doing this in a much more inclusive way. So I hope if you've taken nothing away from this, you've taken away a much broader view of innovation than simply one that's just focused on digital or technology, but actually this much more inclusive, holistic view of innovation. So thank you to the panel. Uh, really exciting to hear all this leadership that's coming through uh, in, in UAE and Ethiopia, the role that you know, countries like Switzerland are playing both in their own country, but also globally. And, and then you know, organizations like Mercy Corps, the leadership there, uh, and companies like Yara. Thank you very much.